Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another Winning Agenda Meat Space uh, game. We've got uh, host Brian Hond uh, up against host Jesse Marshall on the left. Um, and joining me today is Mr. Tim Quoza. How's it going, Am Tom? Am I saying that right? Am I... You are saying that absolutely correctly. As correctly as an Australian <laughs> can say it. Uh, so uh, we've got two decks that we've already seen before. We've got uh, Brian's Spark Agency list and Jesse's uh, Professional Contacts Kate list. Um, so this is an interesting uh, aggro corp versus uh, late game control um, runner. Uh, how do you think this matchup is going to pan out? I think it's all going to depend on how fast Brian can get his agendas out and scored. Because once Jesse gets set up, I don't think there's a lot of ice in Brian's deck that's going to keep him out. Um, his advertisements are going to drain Jesse of a bit of his money, but... Um, most of the ice is fairly permissible. Sure. So, uh, I, especially given uh, Jesse's kind of economy sweep, uh, even more so in this game, it's going to be very important for him to hit that Proco early to make sure that he can kind of uh, get out of range of that those uh, advertisements hitting him too hard. Absolutely. It, it kind of hurts a lot more when they drain you for <laughs> one when you're on that one or two versus when you're on 15. It doesn't really hurt too much. Yeah, that's right. And... The fact that Jesse is relying so heavily on Proco in this deck, um, I mean, it essentially means Brian can cancel out, you know, the credit gain from one of those draws, which kind of negates the value of Proco itself. So now it is. Uh, I don't think uh, Jesse does have a professional contact in his hand, but we could see an interesting uh, turn one uh, advertisement res from Brian in order to stop him from having that. Uh, yep. Yeah, there, oh, there you go. You go. In order to stop him from having the five for that pro curse. So, yeah. Um, a really interesting, uh, interesting aspect of this spark agency deck that uh, really plays off of one of those, um, that kind of five credit uh, importancy on turn yeah, absolutely. one. So Jesse now, I mean, he's, he's out of sure gamble range, which is, problematic for a lot of runners but it doesn't look like that was part of his game plan at least with this hand anyway he's actually going fairly aggressively uh looks like he didn't have uh what's in his hand is uh some breakers and yeah. kind of uh, a lot of his rig elements yeah um not necessarily a lot of his economy elements and he's going aggressive perhaps just early looking to maybe regain some um some pace in that the mid game but it's got to hurt he's on uh, on zero credits that's right yeah but i mean he has stopped Brian from taking credits off that launch campaign that was there. So mm. that's, you know, it wasn't, uh, wasn't too it, bad. It wasn't too bad. It could yeah. have been worse. Than could that, have been really. definitely worse, yeah. but, but um, he is back to square run now. So we'll see how he goes. Now it looks like, uh, I'm not sure if he's thinking about taking the credit or if he's taking... No, 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 no. I was, was going to say, I'm not going to raise that advertisement. So. I wasn't sure if he was just taking the credits cautiously yeah. or, and speaking to the big bad wolf yeah. or if he was, uh, Perhaps trying to trying to game him, take take him all quickly, but yeah. we can see that that's one of the big um, aspects of the right. the uh, Spark Agency play is hitting the um, hitting the runner in those prior priority windows between each of their clicks. Absolutely, and this is at its where when it's at its strongest, where you do have that one, two, three credits, and they can deny you from doing the thing that you want to do on the turn. That's right. He's just made Jesse spend two clicks to gain a single credit, which is terrible. I mean, that's. Well, takes his backsies. Um, I'm surprised that uh, Jesse has not reached over and uh, grabbed him by the scruff of the throat. I think we need to speak to the TO. Yeah, of course. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, there we go. Looks like he perhaps just wanted to <clears throat> draw before playing out what he, uh, what he was going to do. Still very much yeah, um, right. uh, against the spirit of the game, you know? We're all cutthroat monsters who want to... Uh, destroy each other but oh, I mean the only thing that matters here is winning and absolutely winning. Is the, it's not it's not the nice <laughs> agenda it's or even the losing agenda or the losing yeah. agenda of course <clears throat> no, uh, so back to the uh, back to the game here Brian in a really uh, strong position um, but I'm guessing he'd probably like to be scoring an, agenda, scoring an agenda right now using this kind of early advantage that he's uh, given himself that's right uh, to to kind of plow through get maybe finish it in the early game but probably at least have a, a good advantage in the mid game um, I mean, the, he's, he's in a very good position now if he draws into an agenda with Jesse on three credits four mm. credits now even with that SMC on the board he's not going to have much of a chance to pull out a breaker and use it mm. I'm not sure if this uh, these spark agency lists are playing uh, 
a lot of larger ice like toll booth maybe there's I, one floating around in the list but um yeah, i don't know i will say that brian having all these credits is while certainly not a bad thing maybe not something that spark agency capitalizes on as well as other decks because they don't have just those enormous ice the uh the heimdall 2.0s as it were well. yeah well <laughs> look we can't all fit that into our decks i guess we can't all just play enormous <laughs> ice uh so another uh another uh, agenda asset another another item going into yeah. uh, that, that remote he, there he's running I mean he is running sand sands in this deck um, you think he, it's the sand sands he didn't see them in the last matchup but that mm. doesn't mean doesn't mean they're not there and that's, I mean, he's got the money for it now he's that's actually on, what nine credits so. yeah that's one of the things that he can use all his uh, you know pile of credits to do is to yeah. uh, to raise sand sands and stuff so um, could be a uh, the start of well, no, no hits there. It could be the start of him uh, getting that Astro train going. That's right. Choo choo. Right. <laughs> uh, Jesse, pretty, ooh, very, uh, very run friendly attacking R and D. Yeah, I was trying to get Brian to spend some of that money. Yep. Ooh, oh, plucks an Astro script off the top. Not good. <laughs> he does have. I think uh, that was international sign language for how is that fair? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does have another one in his hand though, so uh, he could potentially. Uh, we could still see the train going, that's but right, that's right. Um, never a good thing to, to lose an agenda, particularly if it's one of your better ones. And going the uh, the maker's eye for the full. I oh, know he's going to oh, force no. him to res the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what click this is. I don't know if he had, he's able to uh, click through, but he's definitely playing. Uh, I believe he's playing Corroder in this list, so I don't think he'd be able to get through. Yeah, that's right. He is with uh, the SMC there. So. Oh, is he just drawn into another Astro? I think he has. Oh my. So I, potentially all three of those Astros maybe uh, yeah, on, on the top of them at the same, same time, yeah. Jackson um, probably installing the yeah, Astro script. definitely an Astro there. And installing on HQ, interesting. Hmm. Maybe uh, maybe he didn't put the Astro script in the, uh, the, the, that big kind of remote zone. Yeah, I, I can't actually imagine what that is right now. <clears throat> maybe, uh... There'd be some advertisements in there. Yeah, I absolutely. guarantee you. There's um, there are a couple I that are. I can't remember the name of them now. The the newer ones, but the um, that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So dra not only draining uh, Jesse of credit, but uh, yeah, but he'll drain him two more. Draining two more if he accesses it. Yeah. So uh, if that is going to be the sand sand server, it's going to be a hard one to bust open. So Brian's just pulled in an APD. He's uh going hard on the Jackson. Not sure what he's trying to find here. Perhaps uh, another piece of ice to put on that server to um, to, to get going. Maybe looking for more economy um, so that he can res that uh, res the sand sand and uh, score through it. Yeah, I mean, he is running a bit light on cash at the moment. I mean, I could be wrong about the sand sand. There may not be one on that server. And if there isn't, mm. uh, that's what he'd be digging for. But... Going for the big discard here. Or so. really with the Jackson out, he could just be trying to thin out his hand and throw some of those agendas away that he doesn't plan on scoring yet. Mm. So something for, for newer players who maybe have not, not been playing for playing with Jackson Howard. This is kind of one of the strengths of uh, uh, of Jackson, that even though Brian's discarding and, you know, discarding isn't great, yeah. uh, he's essentially sculpted his yeah. hand That's uh, right. to be you know, the perfect five cards. Um, and we'll see here. Jesse's just run on archives, so he's uh, oh, so, so he, he's letting him take the breaking news. He Jackson there, but uh, potentially uh, had four agendas in the bin. Yeah, that's very um, possible. Uh, and that's pretty uh, pretty key because uh, if Jesse now hits out all of the uh, the remaining agendas that he scores are all two pointers, he will uh, will win with four four agendas. And I don't know what the agenda suite Brian's running is exactly. I mean, there'd be the three Astros. There's the NAPDs. Mm -hmm. um, we we did we have seen at least one project bill. We did right. see in a previous right. game, and now we've seen at least one breaking news. You'd have to assume a second one in the mm -hmm. deck. And now he's going on HQ. So, an interesting choice from Jesse. Uh, he, I mean, he must think that maybe Brian's keeping at least one. Mm. Um, and now maybe forcing. I don't know if Jesse runs a second parasite. I don't think he would, but not just uh, taking right. the, taking the bulk there. Uh, 
Alright, what's gonna happen? Paying some dollars? No, gaining some dollars. He just took money, alright. Well, he's definitely storing up for something. You'd hope. (laughs) You'd hope he's not just spinning the wheels here. He's got a plan. I mean, he he stopped drawing and... I mean, part of that's because the Jackson's gone, but... Yep. um, So it looks like uh, Jesse has run on... uh, archives or, or, or something R&D. to get get an extra yeah. um get an extra token and then has murdered Elo. Yeah. So what have we got here? Accessing a uh, a launch, a launch campaign. campaign, yeah. No, he's gonna leave it. Oh. He's gonna index it. Jeez. Interesting. So uh Brian's kind of uh, I guess stagnated here and really allowed Jesse who hasn't had a lot of money for this whole game. He's actually been sitting on this kind of four, five, six credits for a very long time. Um, he's Doesn't actually, look like he hasn't rearranged the cards at all. No. <laughs> he didn't see anything he wanted to see. But uh, Jesse has been able to get quite a lot of uh, a lot of game out of this very low credit base. That's right. Uh, and yeah, getting back that parasite there. So hitting architects. Obviously, the five cards Jesse does know from the indexing yeah that's right uh, but he's chosen to break both oh, subroutines oh Oof. there's the astro <clears throat> perhaps it was this sand scene that Brian's been digging for could have been could have been that would make sense or <clears throat> maybe a biotic if he's playing it All right. Finally, uh, another piece of ice on that uh, on R and D to replace the uh, murdered Eli. Well, I mean, at least Jesse's lost or he's used his recursion or what recursion he has. So mm. uh, he could still hit uh, HQ again here for for two credits. Absolutely. Yeah. That's uh, having only the architect. There's a problem. So it'll be uh, interesting to see if uh, interesting <laughs> to see if Jesse kind of. Uh, slows down on the aggression. Ah, oh, you see Brian uh, kind yeah. of resing this Adonis in the middle of uh, Jesse's turn to potentially stop him from getting to five to play out yeah, a professional that's right. context. That's right. That's smart. <clears throat> and then uh, Jesse not willing to uh, to trash it. So that might have been the uh, extra economy that Brian needed to... Uh, Try and uh, get that sand sand down, or yeah, that's right. Get a, get a couple more pieces of ice out. So look like he's drawn into that launch campaign now. So trouble go. here. Trouble here for Jesse is is that you know Brian's running a very horizontal deck, and Jesse hasn't drew, drawn into his astrolabe yet. So. Mm. Uh, when it does come down, it might be too late. Yep, exactly. These servers are already going to be built. Although I can't imagine Brian's going to ice most of those remotes. So, mm-hmm. you know, they're going to come and go. Jesse going for the... Uh, looks like trying to draw potentially into some economy. A, a, a lucky find right here. Ooh, is that Parisha? Parisha. So uh, yeah. this is his, uh, I guess, another one of his outers to these asset-based economy decks. Um, and looks like he's going to just start eating up some campaigns. Um, set that go. goes for the, the launch campaign draining another credit but Parisha very pretty good against these these decks yeah absolutely <clears throat> uh, looks like main phase resing uh, uh, another campaign um, we'll try and get them to make it a bit more visible um, but yeah draining Jesse of his final credit as well so Brian's got a window here now. Mm. Let's see if he can do anything with it. Looks like he's on uh, th- 13, 14 credits, something like that. There we go. Is it was the sand the sand, sand, there. sand. <laughs> It was the whole time. There you go. That's all he was doing. He was trying to get enough money to use it. Mm. It's a shame it didn't happen earlier. See? And, uh, and there was an <laughs> <there. laughs> Oh wow! I, uh, of all the things that I thought were there, <laughs> I, I could have imagined the sand sand was there, but certainly not the NAPD. That's no, uh, it's a no. bit of a balls out move. Yeah. 
I guess his uh, his thought there was that uh, you know Jesse was never going to run it in the first that's right, place. That's right. Now it looks like he's got another one. All right. What's so? What's that card there? A bit hard for me to uh, to see. Oh, there's Clot. There's Clot? Yeah, so he's just installed Clot now, because with Brian having the Sand Sand out, most of his agenda suite can be installed and scored in one turn. Mm. <clears throat> interesting uh, interesting turn of events. That was straight from his hand. He didn't... Uh, mm. Or did he SMC for that? He must have, yeah. So, or no, you know what? I think he installed it from his hand, but he mm. trashed the SMC. Sure. Um, I, I think that's, that makes a bit more sense because he does have so few credits. Um, two pretty key part, tree, key uh, cards in the matchup, Clot and uh, Parisha. Um, he's assembled both of them. Obviously, the cost that he you know, now cannot further progress his rig unless he finds that Astrolabe, but uh, should hopefully be enough to slow Brian down. Yeah, we hope so. No, he's probably installed the NAPD there. Mm. It's pretty safe right now. Jesse... Can't even take it. He's only on one credit. He's only on one. He can get up to four, but Brian's going to yeah. be able to force him to, to spend some money breaking ice. So. I think right now he's uh, trying to get him to spend some credits so he can kind of slow that That's down. Right. Maybe he can score the uh, the agenda next turn, but what about... Oh, the here we go. Oh, wow. Special offer. So Jesse Russ loses his only credit, and Brian gains... It's five. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I think it's five. Or is it seven? Uh, and then he's going to, uh... I don't know. I think he can, just, he can just let it go. It, because yeah. if this is an NAP, <clears throat> he's not going to be able to steal it. That's right. He can't uh, trash the Sand Sand. Um, what's the trash cost on uh, uh, on the uh, upgrade there? Oh, uh, I think that's two. So he might be able to trash that with Parisha. Yeah. Uh, but he's already... Uh, he, did he already use the Parisha? Uh, not this turn. No, maybe not. Yeah, I'm not sure what is. So pretty, uh, pretty good turn there for Brian getting that yeah. special special offer of keeping uh, keeping Jesse low on credits and uh, scoring this NAP, which are the kind of harder agendas to score. Absolutely, um, and he's still got a fairly significant credit advantage now. Yep. Um, with both that pad and that Adonis has still got some money on it, so he's going to start next turn in pretty good shape. Mm. The clot's a bit of a problem. Mm. Um, he's going to have to pace himself as he does this, mm. unless he wants to waste a turn purging. Uh, Which he may want to do. He may. I mean, it, it, it can be worth it. At this stage, it'll be interesting, uh, interesting pivoting point. Brian has uh, a couple of options ahead of him. Obviously, his hand's going to dictate quite a lot of that. We're seeing a lot of uh, white, so a lot of, uh, mm. a lot of ice in his hand. Maybe it uh, looks like a Project Beal. Um, it looks like he's fanning between a There's Project Beal. There's an architect Beal. in there somewhere. I yeah, think. fanning between a Project Beal and an ice. So maybe thinking about installing both of those. Not going for a draw. There's another sand sand. He could uh, try and bait out another run. Uh, every run here, because Jesse doesn't really have an economy engine behind him, is really doing uh, a number. That's on, uh, right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, every credit he spends is, you know, uh, is actually another click that he's getting sent set behind. Whereas usually, you know, between professional contacts and some other options, he would uh, he'd be able to recover a bit quicker. So yeah, it looks like installing what we believe is a uh, project bill and uh, another. Another piece of ice, which could be that architect, could be a perhaps a, another another wraparound, which is doing the, doing quite good here. Yeah, that's right. And until Jesse can uh, get some more memory, he's in a really tough spot. Uh, yep. Um, so he's going so to have to trash something. So here we go. to trash Parisha. That's probably the most natural selection right yeah. now. So um, even though it was, it's <clears throat> quite good in this matchup, he's going to have to forego that um, that kind of uh, longer game advantage. Uh, in order to try and do some damage and, and potentially even get the win. I, I mean, we talk about, we're talking that he's kind of on the back foot, but he's still on five points. Yeah, he is doing all right. He can, is he going to spend his only credit to go in? No. He's going to He's going to make his eye. eye. Yeah, I thought that might have been the case. So this could be it. Nope. There's a whiff. And no, another one. There's a whiff. 
All right. Uh, well, uh, lots of money. That's lots, a- lots of money for Ryan. Uh, this is not good. <clears throat> Now, and that, that, la- that lady's going to be a problem here because he's. I mean, wraparound is a great piece of ice, but it. You know, it's only going to drain it of one token every time Jesse goes in. But he's got some reprieve here. The top cards of his deck are uh, quite blank, and he's yep. presumably going to score this uh, agenda here. Um, and look, if it is a Beal, he could look at potentially overscoring it. That's going, a very going, real possibility. Going yeah. for the. Uh, the the three-point Beal to uh, seal the game. It, it would force Jesse uh, if he were to... Tri- if it is the Beal and he does triple mm. advance it here, uh, or double advance it rather, uh, it would force Jesse to get in there and uh, and take it. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> uh, it's a very risky move because if it doesn't work out, he does lose. Um, no, so he's definitely going to spend a click doing something. Looks like the Beal's still in his hand. It may just be another upgrade. There you go. Hand wave perch. says, "Get rid of the uh, get rid of the data sucker counters." The get rid problem of the, here is, is he just freed up some memory for Jesse, and Jesse has the clone chip as well, so he can instant speed pull that claw back in. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure Brian made that purge decision with the intent to necessarily get rid of the claw. I think he may realize <laughs> that he's got. Um, uh, he does have a couple of turns, given that Jesse couldn't do anything off that maker's eye. Um, and so he might just want to get the purge out of the way sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, that's true. He does have a bit of a window carefully. now, so here we go. So here's more money for Brian. So he's probably happy to Sit not score and... for a while, yeah, until he draws into an agenda. But once again, we, as we've said before, this is this is a situation where Jesse's definitely on the back foot. He doesn't have that economy engine, and every turn Brian gives him is more turns where he could potentially be drawing into that. I mean, imagine a, a you know a lucky find or, or something in that order, even a dirty laundry right now. It's just going to put Jesse really back in yeah, back in right. the game and allow him a bit more aggression once he does know that the top cards of Brian's deck are uh, are safe. Well, what's happened now is you know Brian's already drawn through the cards that Jesse saw, so um, yep. any access now is is new. <clears throat> Perhaps, uh, perhaps goofing there. Huh? And with the R and D interface, you can see two cards. That's it. Yeah, it is. There's the bill. So <laughs> I'm not sure what he was going for there, um, but uh, he risked it, risked it, and did not get the bisque it. Um, how do you feel about that game? Oh, it was interesting. It was. Uh... It was actually good to see Jesse do so much with so little money. Mm, he, um, he really I mean, that, that deck, quite scrappy. That's right. I, that deck does run fairly tight. Um, I think you've got to be on top of the calculations when you make every single run to be successful with that deck. But um, yeah, playing against Spark is way worse than he normally would be. So mm. um, yeah, he's done pretty well. Yeah, impressive. And it was uh, as you say, it was a really good match to watch uh, a deck having to do something different and adapt on the fly. Jesse did a really good job at that, and Brian, uh, you know, capitalized on what his deck strength uh, strengths are, um, but wasn't able to uh, eke things out. Um, and so looks like we'll just uh, they'll just be enjoying a bit of social media, a bit of, a bit of Andre Rio as well. <laughs> Um, but uh, thanks for joining us with all these Meat Space videos, guys. Uh, this is a bit of a bonus one for you. Uh, we thank all our Patreon supporters for helping uh, making this happen. We love you, all of you. If you want to support us, you can support us on Patreon. You can pick up a winning agenda playmat on inkedplaymats.com. They do look quite spiffy. Uh, or you can just listen to us every week on the Winning Agenda podcast. Uh, on behalf of uh, Tim Quozo and myself, Thomas Daniel, uh, we'll see you next time. See you guys. See ya.